What is one thing you have never tried and have no desire to ever try? Scuba diving in caves. The thought of not being able to surface is terrifying. I love swimming, grew up next to the beach, and have dived a lot, but being unable to head vertically up for air makes it a definite no-go for me. Scuba diving anywhere for me. I know the odds of something happening to me are slim to none, but once I'm in the water all I can think about are sharks. Nope. Can't even go into the ocean ankle deep because of the fear. I'll never forget the time I was diving with this cheap ass dive shop. I was like 15, and while following the guide, we just went into a big ass cave. I had my junior open water, not overhang or anything. Next dive with that company, turned into a wreck dive, crawling through tiny areas near deadly lionfish and rusty nails. It was hella dangerous, and I was scared, but it was also the two best dives of my life. Cave diving. Get turned around, and your fate is frantically looking to retrace your path as your oxygen runs out, and you eventually drown. There's enough things that can go wrong with diving. I don't understand wanting to take away the ability to go to the surface quickly if necessary. I like the one story guy told where they accidentally kicked up dirt from the bottom of the tunnel, and then couldn't see shit at all. Piercings for my dick. Hell no keep that sharp shit away from me. I have a pretty curious personality, so I always wondered what a dick piercing would feel like. So one day I got an apid ravire. I was absolutely totally unprepared for how painful it was going to be, holy fuck I still get PTSD from remembering it. Then I had to wait like a month or more to use it again. Potholing, exploring them underground caves with the tiny gaps you have to squeeze through. Tried this with friends years ago. They loved it. I was so uncomfortable the entire time and kept crying due to being so overwhelmed 10 tenths couldn't pay me to do it again. Literally had a panic attack watching the movie The Descent because of tight cave spaces at the beginning. I would get stuck and never be heard from again. My dad was voluntold to join a coroner's inquest in the army many years ago. Guy was found with a rope around his neck in his base housing closet. Coroner determined he died trying to masturbate using autoerotic asphyxiation. They all agreed to spare his wife the embarrassment and mark it as a suicide. Edit, I should clarify it was marked as an intentional suicide, versus an accidental one. They also left out details of how he was found. Bungee jumping. I know it is safe. I know nothing will happen. I won't try as I'm just too scared nevertheless. A broken rubber brought me into this world. I'm not letting another one take me out of it. Did it, would never do it again. You do right to avoid it. New Year's Eve in Times Square. I love doing all the touristy stuff here, but that's one I would never do, unless of course, someone put me up in a fancy hotel overlooking the scene. You know, I can grok with someone who wants to do Burning Man, or Pensick War, or a pipeline protest, or camp out for days at a folk festival. But I have difficulty with the fact that my same species want to spend hours in a packed crowd in the freezing cold with no toilets for the sake of counting down time. There was a story on reddit a while back about a guy who was really into scat porn, so he paid to have a hooker shit on him from above. He said he regretted it the moment he saw the shit peek out above him, but it was too late. R.I.P. I'll never forget the reddit tale of the guy who was super into that fetish. He watched a bunch of videos of it. Then he hired a gal to diddy in his mouth hole, only to realize at the exact instant that her touched tongue that he was, in fact, not into it after all. Deep sea diving. I don't like water where I can't see my feet. Because of this my brain irrationally believes there is a jaws all around me at all times, if in deep water, thus it makes me basically go zero, 100 panic attack. I have zero interest in this, and so I never will. I'm a dive master, I did my course in Madagascar, one of the last deep dives was a deep blue dive at 120 feet, 40 meters, you couldn't see the surface, or the bottom, and everything around you is just, deep blue. I actually really enjoyed it, but most of the time deep dives don't spend much time in those sorts of situations. Usually you're diving to get to something, like a wreck. I've never had a scary experience underwater, but for some reason I'd rather night dive the ocean than dive a murky freshwater lake. Skydiving. Fat man plummeting towards the earth just doesn't sound appealing. 
Edit. Thank you for appreciating the joke about my weight enough to. Ahem. Nick my inbox. Accidental atomic bomb joke. Fugu. Japanese puffer fish. Expensive delicacy. The tetradot in the fish produces and stores in a bladder has to be carefully excised by the fugu chef or else it will invisibly poison the diner. Hard pass. I don't care how long the chef has to study under a master fugu chef before being allowed to serve customers. I don't care if the flavor of fugu induces instant orgasm. I'm not rolling those dice. Every Funny story, I was in Japan right before COVID shut everything down, and on our last day, tried some fugu from the department store food court. Keep in mind most department stores in Japan have extremely high quality food even in the food courts, but the whole experience was just meh, kind of chewy, and an overall underwhelming experience. Three guys get captured by a bunch of tribesmen to be sacrificed to their god. However, they have a chance of escape. They each have to go into the forest, search for 10 of a fruit, and come back to the village. The first guy comes back with 10 apples. The chief then informs him that he now has to stick all 10 of them up his ass. If he pulls a face or makes a sound, he gets sacrificed. He starts to get to work. As he gets to apple 4, he yells out in pain and is promptly thrown into the sacrificial chamber. The second guy comes back with a bundle of grapes. Same deal. He is inserting them, one right after the other. Then, on the 8th, he bursts out laughing, then is thrown into the chamber. Appleman then asks you were so close. Why did you start laughing? To which Grapeman was, like I saw the other guy come back with 10 pineapples. Finn. Second marriage. Once was more than enough for me. Just out of curiosity, how long ago was the divorce? I got divorced about 2 years ago, and I'm still in your mindset. Just wondering if it fades with time. Eating live animals. Not a vegan, but people eating live frogs, octopuses and other small creatures are straight fucked. What? You don't like the thought of slimy tentacles covered in stomach acid wriggling around in your belly trying to make their way back up your esophagus. Swinging slash cuckolding. Watching my wife getting mailed by another guy is the stuff of nightmares edit. Wow. Thanks for the replies, and my first awards too, thank you. I don't have anything against the lifestyle at all, it's just not for me. I've turned down 4 threesomes in my time, all of which have involved the so at the time. Even the opportunities with my so and another girl, whilst very tempting, just felt potentially ruinous. Or when my so offers me a threesome with another girl my brain just says it's a trap. Say no. Same dude. It's unnervingly popular amongst my friend group. But, I could never. I don't care how hot the girl I would get to fool around with. Nobody is touching my wife. Plus, I don't want anyone but her anyway. Just seems like a bad idea. I mean, I've seen it work for some people and I don't judge them at all. I'm perfectly content in my monogamous relationship though. I agree. On a similar note, threesomes. I'm the least jealous girlfriend ever, but I know the minute I'd see that girl laying next to me have my boyfriend suck her nipples before mine, I'd go Irish. When I was single, two friends of mine who were engaged to be married asked if I was interested. I was flattered with the way they asked me, we both think you're beautiful, so hot, honest and we could totally trust you with, but after I slightly pondered it, I gave them the most polite thanks, but no thanks I really don't think I'd ever be able to handle it. Banze the sport, where you're at 3000 kilometers. Height. Then you have to throw your parachute and 30 seconds later you jump. Your objective is to catch parachute. It would be a nice death at least. You know, when someone asks your parent how you die they would be like. She hired this homie had really big balls edit. 3000 meters. You're not supposed to jump from outer space. This is the first time I've read of a sport with a likely higher death chance than Russian roulette. Unless you have a spare shoot I suppose, but then you may as well chase a bull down instead. I'm guessing you mean 3000 meters? Cocaine. I had opportunities in college too. But yeah, I watched the people that were on coke and didn't want to do that. Speaking as a former coke addict, don't try coke. It's the most overrated drug on the planet. 
It's expensive. It doesn't last long. You always want more when it's gone. And you feel like garbage the next day. I do like the numbing effect though. For a similar experience, drink a small pot of Death Wish coffee and power chew a few throat lozenges. That should save you about $70. P. Crack. Heroin. Having sex with a prostitute edit. Thanks everyone that pointed out that it's heroin. And not heroin lol I'm deathly afraid of needles. Still will get vaccinated. So I agree on heroin 100%. Never saw the appeal to prostitutes. Never want to try crack. Going to a strip club. Just not my style. I was in Vegas on summer of 2017 with a bunch of friends. And we still didn't go to one. Long time ago, a friend and I were drinking through the night, and he really wanted to go. I'm just not into it. He's having a grand old time, while I found a comfortable booth to relax slash nap in. Two strippers nudged my foot to wake me up and ask if I wanted a lap dance. No, I want to nap. Leave me alone. Coprophilia. Don't google it. If you don't know what it is, you will regret it. You said don't google it, as if you knew we had to google it. Without that warning I would have just dismissed it as something I don't want to know. Going to gouge my eyes out now. Drugs in general. I hate feeling like I'm not in control of my faculties even laughing gas at the dentist is too much for me. So I'll just continue to stay away. Small doses of caffeine are pretty much my only drug. I do a lot of drugs, benzos, uppers, hallucinogenics, etc. But holy fuck the laughing gas at the dentist was one of the worst highs of my life. I have never felt so anxious, scared, out of control, etc. in all my life. I 100% wish I hadn't been given it. Spice. The drug. Yeah fuck that. I know I can't even hack weed. That spice would fuck me up beyond belief I don't need that shit in my lifey. Stop telling me the spice must flow dune fanboys. But the spice melange is the most sought after substance in the known universe. Spices for pusses or my friends do death sticks. My friend came home from the, the west, US, while he was in the air force. They all smoked it because they didn't drug test for it. I packed a bowl and smoked it not knowing that all I needed was one toke. I laid in bed praying that I wouldn't die. He told me that I smoked too much and I should try it again and only take one toke. I remember confusion, my body freaking out and convulsing while I had absolutely no control over my body. I had a huge ass seizure, that's what happened in hindsight. Never again. Skydiving. I get people's want to do it after the second time for the adrenaline rush and that. But for the life of me, I do not understand what compels someone to be you know what. Today I want to jump out of a plane and rely on cloth to bring me down safely I have no issue with heights or flying, but that just boggles me edit. Well this blew up on the replies front. Replied to a few, but there's just too many guys. You kinda answered your own question. It's for the adrenaline rush, especially if you're an adrenaline junkie. Anal. I'm a guy, but I just don't like the idea of it. It's okay. I wouldn't refuse to do it, but I also wouldn't ask for it. Like yeah it feels good, and it's different and enjoyable, and can be very pleasurable for both parties, but then afterward she takes forever in the bathroom and you have a little bit of poop on your dick, and it smells, and the room is humid with booty stank, and there's a slight sheen of, but juice all over your junk, and you can't exactly complain, that she's taking so long or rush her, because you're not the one, that just got fucked in the ass. Algae aboard. Like, I don't believe in ghosts. So the way I see it, there's two possibilities. Either I'm right, and it's a complete and total waste of time. So why even bother in the first place? Or I'm wrong, in which case I'm dealing with some supernatural bullshit I'm in no way prepared for. There is a scientific explanation to it. It relies on the same phenomena as when you clutch your hands and put your index fingers very close to each other they get closer on their own. If you blindfold the Ouija board users they spell nonsense and don't land on letters very directly. Getting drunk. I'm afraid of losing control over myself. I'm also afraid of vomiting. Smoking. I don't want to get addicted to it and there's no reason to try it just once because the first cigarette tastes terrible or so I've heard. 
the first few times you get a bus, then before you realize it, I've been smoking for 16 years. Wise to avoid. Yeah never understood the appeal in getting drunk. Drinking is fun and nice, but I don't like the idea of losing my senses. Also I've had uncomfortable experiences with drunk people and I don't want anyone to deal with drunk me. Going on a cruise ship. Even before COVID, I couldn't believe people would confine themselves for days on end to a floating cesspool of germs. I'm no germaphobe either, I used to fly all the time. I went on a cruise a while ago, and it was pretty fun. I liked not having to plan out my whole day and the food was pretty good, and I slept better than I ever have in my entire life on that boat, but if it weren't for my parents paying for my ticket I wouldn't go again. You have to pay out the ass for alcohol, especially and you feel nickel and dimmed for almost everything from certain menu items to the sauna slash spa to the fact that certain decks are specific to VIP ticket holders. Also turn the slight guilt you feel going out to restaurants that makes you over tip service industry workers and turn that up to a million. Also most of the events are really unappealing if you aren't over the age of 30. Sending nudes, even to my fiancé. I trust him infinitely, but I don't trust that I couldn't get hacked somehow and have my images stolen, especially if they automatically get stored in the cloud. I know that sounds paranoid af, but honestly I'm definitely super paranoid about putting anything incriminating out on the internet or even through text. If it's any consolation, the likelihood of you specifically being targeted to be hacked is practically zero. The only thing I would be of concern is where and how you send your nudes. If you upload them to a website to send, if the website is hacked then so are your nudes. Probably, of its over Facebook messenger, then no, no independent hacker or small group of hackers is going to even remotely try that, if they were. You wouldn't be their target as, no offense but your nudes aren't as lucrative as anything Facebook itself has, and most commonly, people use MMS, well, good luck hacking a satellite. With that being said, just because it is unlikely that you will be targeted and hacked, you should still be wary about what you do on the internet and try and stay safe. As a woman, a lot of sex acts that have been normalized by porn. I feel at this rate I have to have a list of don'ts to establish with men, rather than the fun sexy list of dos. Are you trying to tell me you don't enjoy having your clit slapped, getting for se fucked until you puke, and then getting jack hammered while pretending you're having the time of your life? That doesn't seem like fun. Never tried marijuana. I have nothing against it, but I just don't have any desire to try it. Mostly because I hate the smell. I know you can get different strains and edibles and stuff that won't smell, but I have no reason to go out of my way to get my hands on them. I'm good without it. I was the same way. Then my country, Canada, legalized and regulated it. Still refuse to smoke it for many of the same reasons you listed. Don't like the smell, and the thought of purposely inhaling smoke in my lungs freaks me out. I have edibles once in a while. They just kinda make me sleepy and slow my mind down a bit. Some edibles have a slight taste of what weed smells like, and I can't stand it them. I've dialed into a couple of specific products that have no weedy taste and get me nice and stoned. I've found being stoned is way more preferable to being drunk. I've not drank since I found my preferred edible. Only do it once a month, maybe less. For those in Canada, Aurora Drift Dark Chocolate is the best. Roller coasters. People call me crazy, but I'd just rather not. I'm more of a scrambler fan, where I'm close to the ground. For reference, I can barely climb a ladder without freaking out so anything involved with heights is a no from me. Finally found someone who agrees with me. I seriously can't put up with most roller coasters, and really large ones are like hell fucking no. Nope nope nope. Side note, I think it's not heights or speeds, although I'm not a huge fan of heights I can mostly deal with them. In terms of speed, the idea of driving race cars that go way faster than any coaster appeals to me, but coasters do not. I think it's because you have zero control over it if something does go wrong. It's funny, I have a severe fear of heights as well. When I'm at a two-story mall, I can't get near the railing without feeling woozy. I used to hate the idea of roller coasters and I was, and still am, a big scrambler fan. 
One day while in recovery from my anxiety, I decided to just say fuck it and ride the biggest roller coaster at the amusement park. I figured it would be 2.5-ish minutes of torture, but then I could definitely say, yep hate it. Ended up loving it and became a roller coaster enthusiast. Definitely a big switcheroo on that one and most people who hate roller coasters wouldn't have the same outcome, which I totally get and respect, but I just think it's so hilariously stupid that I did a total 180 like that. Cottage cheese. Like fuck no. I grew up on a farm during summers, and cottage cheese and peaches were like the go-to snack for us kids. I didn't realize that was weird until I started going to bigger city public schools. Man you're missing out, so protein dense, really good on toast with a bit of honey and or cinnamon. Having kids. It's just. Getting pregnant. Giving birth. Taking care of a baby. Raising it. None of that seems remotely enjoyable to me. And I know, I know, the brain produces hormones to make you feel warm and fuzzes towards the screaming, shooting goblin you just pushed out, to make you care for it. But I have no interest in birthing a child that will force me to lose sleep and possibly ruin my body and force massive emotional slash financial stress on my life that I simply cannot handle. Honestly, it just comes down to the fact that being a mother is not something I want to do. There are a multitude of reasons, and I can go on for hours about them. I'm fortunate that I have a husband that doesn't want to put a baby in me, and I applaud people who go through the trouble of having kids, because someone has to keep the species going, right? Smoking, it has no single long-term positive aspect. Never understood the appeal. It just stinks and is disgusting. All new friends in school, smoked since it was cool. Thanks but no. Besides it is super unhealthy, inhaling poison into yourself. Lung cancer is pretty much the end, if you get it. Anal. I can barely even touch my chocolate starfish. In my mind it's a one way poop shoot and I don't want my digit smelling like my girlfriend's bunghole. Thankfully she shares my sentiment and I anticipate on proposing tomorrow. So fingers crossed I'll never have to try it. Drugs. I know some people might find this stupid of me, but I've never had the desire to get high. It's not worth the lasting consequences and addiction to me. Same here. I just don't have a desire. I don't like getting drunk either. Alcohol just makes me sleepy. Marijuana. I'm mid 30s and never tried it and probably never will. I have no problem with it. I've signed several petitions over the years to legalize it, but shrug me. Have no desire to- Same here. It's weird being in a place, in the US, where weed is legal, and me looking like the type of person who you assume gets stoned. Everyone gives you a long look, when you have to say you haven't tried it, like they're deciding, if they believe you. LSD or any kind of psychedelics. I've had weed chocolate and just recently 25% of a weed gummy and that fucked me up. If I ever want to figure out the meaning of life, or if I want to write one of the best screenplays in the world I will take another one, but I can't, because when I was on the high, I contemplated suicide. That's a normal everyday occurrence to me that I overcome daily, but it was multiplied by 500. I had to be near someone. The demons in my head told me why not do it? You're going to live sad for the rest of your life. Do it. And I was like fuck that steep. So. If I took a psychedelic, I'd see shit. Not cool.